It's fine. Uh, oh, thank you. <clears throat> Happy birthday, Brother Branham. Here's something that I want to give you. Thank you. Amen. Brother Duplessis, I'd like to have you help us here. This is a little surprise tonight for all of us. We didn't know that it was Brother Branham's birthday. Maybe you can hold this up. This is a picture that we're presenting, the first public presentation of this picture, the new head of Christ. It's really a miracle picture. We feel that God has saved this uh, for several years now to be presented tonight to Brother Branham on his birthday. He'll have something perhaps to say about it. We're certainly very happy to give this to you as a token. And if you have room in your station wagon, you can take it along or we'll send you one through the mail, Brother Branham. Thank you sure very much. I'd like to mention this, that this picture, uh, we're giving it to the world tonight, really, through Brother Branham. And God has kept it for this hour. Uh, the uh, painter, the artist, is unknown. And uh, we feel that this is a gift from the Lord to you tonight, Brother Branham, Thank no one else. You. Thank you. And uh, we understand that the one who had it painted, who tried six artists, and finally the seventh was able to paint this vision that this particular one had of the Lord. The lady who had it, we understand, is dead today, tonight, and her son has disappeared. The original is gone, but we are glad to present this picture to you tonight, Brother Branham. Thank you very much, and the Lord bless you. Thank you, Tom. He is my Lord my Savior. And may if I live to see another birthday or as many birthdays as I have in the, the oncoming years of my life, I want to place every minute of my time in service of Him. Amen. I'll be glad. Thank you. You be seated. <clears throat> Thank you kindly. Thanks for the little birthday, happy birthday to you. I am so happy to receive this picture. And today my good friend, Chaplain, Chaplain Stadscliffe and his family was at my room and presented me with some nice things. And my son, little son Joseph, got me the necktie and my little girls a tie class. And my wife made a proposition with me. She said I should buy me a hairpiece if I'd wear it. <laughs> so I... I thought maybe I would. I said to her, you buy it and see if I wear it or not. <laughs> so it's been a great day. Of course, everyone knows that I'm just to past 25 now. <clears throat> I was born in 1909, so anyone can figure knows that I'm past 25. Well, it's all been wonderful, especially these 30 years that I've served my Lord. If there's any regrets that I have of the past, in the years it's passed is because I didn't spend the other 20 serving him. <clears throat> I'm so happy to be a Christian these years. And I'm trusting God to help me as I journey on uh, down the lanes of life that God will lead me by his spirit and let me do something to show my appreciations of the cause that I was born on the earth for him. This morning before I gotten up, I was talking to wife, and I said, Honey, don't seem possible I could be that old. And I said, It just looks like the years have slipped by so quick. But I said, I was born in this world for some purpose. And I believe it's to serve the Lord, and that's my heart's desire. What I would ask of you would be a prayer for me before you lay down tonight, that God would keep me humble in my heart and would help me and bless me so that I could be a blessing to you people. I found out that the greatest blessing in life is giving something out, not receiving in, but giving out. What you do for others, what means so much. I was... Tonight is uh, starting to pray for the sick. Brother Duplicis has just gave us a wonderful message. Just been behind the platform, uh, behind the stage there, listening. And I sure appreciate that message, exaltation of Jesus Christ. And tonight I want to start the new phase of my ministry here, of praying for the sick. Many of you, perhaps, sure, has been in my meetings since the beginning, 
And you know what was said at the beginning. How that I would take and lay hands on the people and I would know what their trouble was. And then he told me if I'd be humble and sincere that it would come to pass, you know, the very secret of their heart. That came to pass. It's been over the world. The angel lords had picture after picture taken of it. We've had the pictures taken, examined by the by the best fingerprint and so forth in the world as we know of. For see if it be a touch up or something wrong or a double exposed picture, it's always proven to be there. It started years ago. That doesn't mean that my ministry, because it's a little peculiar, a little odd to what the average would be, I'm still your brother in the service of Christ, all of you. And I am happy because he lets me serve him. Maybe because I have no education to mount to anything, that's the reason he gave me these gifts that I could work for him. About four years ago, I was here in California. Just before arriving here, I had a meeting in Phoenix. And there, many people had been complaining in my meetings that there was said, well, Brother Oral Roberts will play for, pray for 50 people while you're praying for five. I said, that is true. Brother Oral Roberts has a commission from the Lord, and he prays to the people the way that God tells him to. I have to do the same. <clears throat> and then I taken that up in prayer, and I prayed for quite a while about it, complaining all the time there was not enough gets to the platform. Well, really... In one sense of the word, that's right. Now, the American people has been caught, taught a Jewish custom of laying on of hands. That's not a Gentile custom. The Jews, remember, Jeriah said, come lay your hands on my girl and she'll live. But the Gentile said, I'm not worthy that you come under my roof. Just speak the word and my servant will live. That's the difference. The ministry has not been my ministry to lay hands on the sick. It's been to make by a divine gift to bring presence, the Lord Jesus Christ in presence by a discernment of spirit, which is called in the Bible a gift of knowledge. And in doing so, makes him manifested before the people and then they receive him as their healer. That settles it. I don't have magazines to play up and to say the great testimonies of the people, but you'd be surprised what happens after one of the meetings. Thousands. We could have brought enough testimonies from Jamaica a few weeks ago. Brother Argan Bright, I, he may be here. I think he comes here constantly. And Sister Argan Bright, the Christian businessman, if we'd have captured those Blind, deaf, dumb, wheelchairs, crippled, bent over. We could fill magazines for weeks and weeks to come. But I always tell the people, don't say nothing about it. Just go tell someone the Lord's been good to you. Keep it back. Uh, don't like uh, somebody say, you know, Brother Branham does this and that. I had nothing to do with it to begin with. And if I don't even touch a person, then surely you know I had nothing to do with it. It's the Lord doing it. However, I asked the Lord in my American meetings to let me be able to pray for more people because you're my friends. You're the purchase of the blood of Christ. I want to do everything I can to help you. Now listen to Brother Oral Roberts say, touch something for a point of contact. Well, then I begin to think, what if I was sitting out there and had my little baby and it was sick or something and... I've seen that spirit working on a person. Maybe it might be my faith for that person to lay hands on me, that person to do it. Well, I prayed and Brother Lindsay, many of the men used to tell me, why don't you just have the discernment for two or three and then go on and take a whole prayer line. I never could do that. Every time I'd start it, just as soon as it would strike me, I'd just, that's the reason I get so weak to lead me off the platform. It was because after two or three of those visions, I was so out, I... I hardly knew where I was at. 
I'm sure you theologians can understand that scripturally. When one little woman touched the Lord Jesus and he felt the strength go from him. When Daniel had one vision and was troubled at his head for many weeks, sure that we would uh, know what takes place. And his brother Duplicy said a while ago, the only reason, I believe, that God lets this go on as much as it does now because of his promise, the works that I do, the things that I do, shall you also, and more than this shall you do, for I go to my Father. It's his divine promise. A vision never heals anyone. A vision only brings the reality of a supernatural being present. And then in doing this, it grains faith to the people. So in Phoenix, Arizona, some time ago, I was out on the desert, Brother Moore and Brother Brown and myself, and I saw a vision. And the Lord Jesus said to me in this vision, or the one that was speaking to me, which I believed to be an angel. And I was back behind some rock praying. And he said, when you see this come to pass, then your ministry will be changed. And I looked and there was a woman coming across the platform with a wee little baby. And it was dying. And the Lord healed it. And the woman was light, fair, complected with dark eyes, short hair, shoulder length. And a brown coat suit on. The baby is wrapped in a little blanket. And said, you'll know by this. And standing by me was a short man, bald-headed, and a tall, thin man. Four years I've watched for that. How many ever heard me make that statement that that would come to pass? Raise your hands. Well, just look here. Hundreds of them right here in the, the temple tonight heard that remark. Four years I waited for it. In New England states, a few, well, last spring... A woman come across the platform, almost met, met, met the descriptions. Brother Gold there, one of the tape boys here and with me. At the service, he said, wasn't that the woman? I said, no. Uh, Brother Gene, it wasn't the woman. This woman is to be rather short. And this woman was tall. And she had brown hair. And this woman's going to have black hair. The baby was quite a size baby. And this is a teeny little fellow. It wasn't the woman, although she was wearing the brown coat seat, but it isn't her. And many of you heard of that great disaster in Chicago where I believe the, the, a Catholic school was uh, burnt up and so many children. The Christian businessman, full gospel Christian businessman, gave a memorial service at that same um, armory where the funerals of those children was preached. And I was called upon to be their speaker that afternoon and to offer prayer. After the service is over, I offered prayer for the people and went to my room to return that night to pray for the sick. And Rosella Griffin, uh, one of the horriblest alcoholics that was Chicago ever had, was healed in one of my meetings up there. The Lord told her who she was, the dope peddler. How many ever heard of Rosella Griffin? Well, sure, look the hands around. Certainly one of the greatest alcoholics, Alcoholics Anonymous, give her up. Then another girl, which is Fred Astaire, dancing partner, was a dope peddler with her. And they were called out and her father raised up to resent it. She said, just a minute, Daddy, the man's right. And so after the service is over, Rosella seen a lady crying going down through the building with a little baby. She said, I was sowing hopes that Brother Brandon would get to pay, pray for my baby. She said, it can't live. S several famous doctors of this city has given my baby up. And I thought surely he would come and take it in his arms and pray for the baby. Why, she said, he'll pray for the sick tonight. She said, I can't stay, dear, because it, tonight I am, uh, my husband's setting up with two more children and I'm to return. She said, my pastor of the Swedish Covenant Church. Now, they know the word. They're not very spiritual, but they know where they're standing. And so he said, if everybody's give your baby up, why don't you take it and let Brother Branham pray for it? I believe that God will heal the baby. That was pretty good for a Swedish covenant. And they brought the baby. And so the lady said, well, I can't stay. And one of the big ushers said, I'll hold your baby, lady. If you want to go call your husband. She called the husband and he said, go ahead and stay, darling. I'll take care of the children. So said, now, 
the boy will be at the door, said, you just stand there when he comes in at night and get a prayer card. That's the only thing to do. Say, of course, you'll have to take your chance whether you're called in line or not. Well, Rosella stood with the lady at the door and the baby could not cry. Every bit of food went into its mouth, went right through it, and they couldn't even force some of it in, fed it with veins and so forth, and it was just dying. So they'd give it up, either five or seven doctors. And the little fellow could not live by no means longer than oh, another few days. Couldn't even cry no more. And when Billy come in, my son, Rosella said, Billy, are you going to give our card? Said, yes. She said, well, give this lady one. Said, not till I get up before the audience and mix them up. So he mixed them up, took one and give it to, to the lady. And went ahead and that night when I come in or I call, that woman was about the fourth person in line. Nobody knowed about it yet. And each time when people come, I say to them, I've never seen you before. Have we? Just find out. When I seen her come to the platform, it's been four years since the vision. But a very attractive little lady packing the baby. And I thought, I seem like I ought to know that lady. And as she walked closer to me, she's packing the little one. And I said, uh, how do you do? And she said, how do you do? And the vision broke. And I said, um, your name is so and something or what it was. <laughs> and said, uh, your pastor has advised you to bring the baby because it's dying. She said, that is right, sir. And I said, the baby is six months old and weighs three pounds. She said, that's right. And I said, what you put in the baby can force into it. It doesn't stay in the baby and their doctors can't find out what it is. She said, that is right, sir. And I seen the little baby laughing and jumping and playing a little child. I said, thus saith the Lord. The Lord has healed your baby. She broke down to weeping. I thought there's something strange about that woman. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, don't you remember her? The brown co Oh, there it was. The change of ministry right there. I looked for my wife. I couldn't see her in a great mass of people. I looked for Billy Paul. I couldn't see him. Jean Leo, I couldn't see nobody to, to tell him about it. So when I went out that night from the meeting, it started right there. I could have a vision, get right over it, go on, pray for a whole line of people, and then maybe another one would come. Just where the Lord seemed to be leading it, it changed right there at the platform that minute. Now, I have a way, just like I could do, to put myself in position to see a vision. I can pull right out of it just as easy as I can go into it. So now I can just pray for whole prayer lines of people. I don't have to have that. And then if the Lord sees some sin in some life or something that ought to be called out or somebody so weak in faith or, or something like that, then he'll stop that person and tell them such and such and so and so, go right on, snap right out of it again and go right on and I can just stand and stand and stand in a prayer line like that. So I'm grateful to God for that. And it's certainly done something for my ministry in America. And then the visions continue on just the same. Do you see the sovereignty of God? How that he wants to meet the request of the people. As Brother Oral Roberts has often expressed, God is a good God. That is true. The man may be here just a moment. I'm taking much uh, more time. I, I'm not going to preach. I'm just going to call the prayer line in a minute. I've got some good friends, many hundreds of good friends in California. There's one little old fellow that and his wife is an outstanding friend of mine. That's Minor Argenbright and his wife. They are really sweet people. I've looked all around to see if he was here first. Before I said that, I don't think he's here, so I can say it. His Home has always been my home, just as welcome as I would be. And we've been overseas together and in the mountains together. I find him a fine man. Staying at his home, when I was here in California about a few months ago, I was at the Angeles Temple that night. And the next morning, I believe I was at Brother Vic's church and just had a little one-night jump meeting across the west coast here and the phone would ring and of course here's what it is friends people calling for private well we have a time set usually in meetings for 
people who have problems that they can't solve, they come in and we pray, then the Lord shows a vision. They don't tell me what their trouble is. And the Lord reveals it and tells them and gets them straightened out. That's what those gifts are for. So we have that time set aside, usually in the meeting for that, to have these uh, things. But uh, in this time, I was just jumping and hurrying. We can't go out and make private calls because it's not fair one to the other. And then they get that. They won't bring them to the church and so forth. You know how it is. And some people think well, because that we are Pentecostal in faith that it would pollute their their prestige to bring them into a Pentecostal church. If they feel that way, the Lord would only tell them that when I got there anyhow. So uh, you, you must humble yourself and be willing to come wherever God is and meet Him. Go to find a lot of Pentecostal people in heaven. So you better start associate with them right now. <laughs> so then when... The phone rang and it happened to be that Brother Argan Bright was out of the house, or out of the room, and I picked it up and answered it. It was a nice, this little voice came through on the phone and said, Mr. Argan Bright, I said, he is not in right now. I said, could you tell me if Brother Branham is staying here? I said, I am Brother Branham. He said, thanks be to God. And I thought, now what's this? He said, Brother Branham, I am, told me who he was. And he said, I have a little boy that's dying. Cancer has eat him up and he's just about, I believe, three months old or four months old. He's never swallowed a mouth of food or or milk or anything. The cancer's just eat him up. Will you come and pray for him? Said, the Lord spoke to me just a few days ago when, and said, get Brother Branham and said, I'm, he's a missionary in Mexico but lives here at La Crescenta. And he said, the Lord spoke to me to get you, but I heard that you died in Africa, South Africa, just recently. And said, I thought, why would the Lord be telling me to get you when you were gone and dead? And said, then I heard that you were right here in La Crescenta. He said, it must be the Lord. Well, just as he said that, the Lord spoke to me and said, go with him. I said, just a moment, I'll call Brother Argan right and find out where this hospital is. Los Angeles is so big, I, I have to have somebody bring me over here from where I'm staying. I, I just can't get my way around here. And these freeways where there's nothing but the quick and the dead and those that die, die quick. It, it's so speedy like that. I, I'm just an old slow southerner and I, I can't get out of the way quick enough. So, so then I thought if it was uh, going to be... <laughs> Amen. Thanks be to God. Hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Be prepared. In this, to this quotation, I'm going to tell you the minister's name just a moment. We, I went, Brother Argan Wright taking me down to the hospital, the children's hospital here. I've seen many sad sights, but I don't believe I've ever seen anything like that. It struck me so. When I met him, now the man be be sitting right here now listening at me. Perhaps is. And he just called me a while ago and was telling me the testimony. And uh, no vision, just something said go. And when I met him, he was Mexican. And his wife was a little Swede, blonde head. And lovely little couple. And she was sitting in her little station wagon and... We went across, he and I, to the children's hospital to, to pray for this little uh, one. And when we walked into the hospital, there was such a sad thing. That little baby, it had cancer in the throat and jaws. 
And the doctors had cut its little jaws, its little throat all the way around. And the great stitches in here had just swollen up as this puckered like in. And that had agitated that devil called cancer till it run its little baby tongue out of its mouth and turned it black. And it couldn't get it. That shut its wind off from its nose and through its mouth trying to smother it to death. And faithful doctors working hard had cut a hole in his throat there and put one of them little, um, little, I don't know what you call it, in here looked like a little whistle like in his throat. And its little arms had to be in splint stalks run out like this. It was only about three months old. And its little head was back and that little whistling noise when that little thing trying to breathe. And I looked at that. And the nurse had to take the drainage from that cancer or he had to stop up in that hole when it was coming down. And that little old father walked around there and touched it on his head and said, Ricky, daddy's little baby, daddy's little buddy, this is daddy I brought Brother Branham to pray for you. Little three months old baby and seeing the tears in his eyes as he patted that little thing on the head and it recognized it's daddy. And it's just got to whistling real loud, that breathing going like that, his little hands out. I tell you, friend, something left me. I, I've seen lots of sights, but I got children too, and a little child has suffered. I turned around, he was trying to quieten it, saying, Daddy's little boy, Daddy's little boy. And I turned and my head like this, and I thought, Lord Jesus, I I know that can't be your will for a little innocent baby to suffer like that. I just can't believe that it's your will. And what would you do if you were standing here? What would what attitude would you take? I hope that I'm not a fanatic and not misrepresenting anything. God knows whether I am or not. Something said to me, not a voice, but something inside of me said, I'm waiting to see what you'll do. And I turned as if it had spoken out. And I thought, that's right. You commissioned your church to carry on your work. So I reached over and tuck its little hand in them splints held its little fingers like this. I said, Heavenly Father, this is so striking till I, I just can't stand it anymore. And hear my prayer, O oh God. And by the commission of, a, of God and ministered to me by an angel, I condemned this devil of cancer that the doctors is fighting so hard to save this baby's life. I place between this cancer and the baby's life the blood of Jesus Christ. And I just walked away and the father patted him on the head and walked out and never said no more. Walked across the street. I said, don't you worry about that child no more. The father called me this afternoon in just a few hours time the swelling was leaving the baby its tongue went back into its mouth normal the next morning the baby swallowed its first bite in all of its life the baby is home now perfectly sound and well from all them powers of the devil turned it loose the man's name is reverend d capital d u p o n s t a his telephone number is C.H. Churchill 92658 at La Crescenta. The little Ricky is a living tonight, nine months old, enjoying good, perfect health again because Jesus Christ lives. How wonderful our Lord. I believe I'll call this brother tomorrow if it would be nice. And one of these nights, have him bring little Ricky down. Would you like to see him and hear him testify the same? 
If this minister is present now, the minister's name that I have read, would you raise up your hand, sir? I don't. The man sitting here present now, raise up to your feet. You don't have Ricky with you, do you? Will you bring him down one night for us to give us testimony? Thank the Lord for it. That's fine. Let's give God a great big praise saying, praise the Lord. Now let us pray. Lord, the Bible said that the man was standing present so they could not say all against it. By the grace of God, thou hast saved the life of little Ricky. And we are so happy tonight to know it. And we pray, Lord, that by his little testimony will cause literally hundreds of people to be saved. And we claim him, Lord, for the gospel as a trophy. If there is a tomorrow and his dear father has gotten so old he cannot preach no more, let Ricky take the sword on, Lord. May he live to see the day when his daddy will take the sword of the word and hand it in Ricky's hand and you give him the spirit. May he preach the in great riches of Jesus Christ to the age that he shall live in. Grant tonight, Lord God, that people will know that that same God that saved little Ricky is here. And can save ever suffer in this building tonight. Grant it, Lord, and let thy great name be known and magnified. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we ask it. Amen. We will now call for the prayer cards. A's. Prayer card A's. Right line up on this side, beginning with number one. Prayer card A, number one. Who has it? Are you sure it was A? Prayer card A, number one. Who has it? Uh, here, come down here. Lady. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. Number six. Number seven. Number eight. All down. Line up one by one as your numbers. And someone will go down there and, and uh, help them to line the people up. Everybody holding prayer cards, A, line up on this sign. We'll be glad to minister. And those, some of you who cannot get into the prayer line or are holding these prayer cards, I'll ask the ushers to bring them down in front so we can pray for them. All you that do not have prayer cards... And you're sick and you want Jesus to heal you, raise up your hands wherever you are in the building. Let me, while they're lining them people up, let me just ask you something. And you listen real close now. In the scriptures, the book of Hebrews, it is written that Jesus Christ is a high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. Do you believe that to be the truth? And also, the same book of Hebrews 13, 8, says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Then if he is the same yesterday, today, and forever, he's the same high priest. And if he was touched yesterday... When he was here on earth, by the feeling of the people's infirmities, and if he is sitting at the right hand of God tonight, a high priest, making intercessions upon our confession, and if we had touched that same high priest tonight, he would act the way he did when he was here on earth, would he not? There was a woman in the Bible. And she come to 
know Jesus by hearing. Faith cometh by hearing. She had an issue of blood. And so she, hearing of Jesus, one morning, let's say it was about nine o'clock. The sea had been rough. I'm just speaking to you to hold your attention while they're lining the people up in the line. And so it had been a rough night. The little ship had been tossed about with a few little fishmen and oarmen coming across the, the lake. The Galilee was stormy. And about nine o'clock at morning, the willows parted and a little boat pushed into the, the shore. And people begin to say, here comes that prophet. Some saying, that deceiver. Where Christ is, there's always a mixed multitude. He, he chose twelve, and one of them was Judas. When Moses went out of Egypt, a mixed multitude went with him. Where the supernatural's done, there's always been the pro and con. Now, in that, a little woman up on the hill, maybe she had spent all of her living trying with the doctors to get a cure for a blood issue. She had had it several years. And so she said within herself when she seen him coming, no matter what the people say, I believe that that man is the Son of God. And she pressed her way through the crowd and being weak and anemic condition, weakening, she finally got up to where he was and she maybe had to squeeze through some of them, pressing her way. And if you ever get to Christ, you're going to have to press your way to him because there's going to be all kinds of people there trying to hold you back. But... She was determined, so she pressed her way until she touched the border of his garment. And when she touched him, she goes back out in the audience where the people were and took her stand. And Jesus, when he felt that touch, he turned and he said, who touched me? And all of them denied it. She denied it because she was scared. And Peter wanted to rebuke him. And he said, why do you say such a thing while well, all the multitude is touching you, thronging you? But he said, I perceive that virtue has gone from me. His strength had left him, made him weak. And he looked around over the audience until he found where the woman was. And he told her of her condition that her faith had saved her. Now that's the way that high priest acted in the days gone by when he was here on earth. If he is that same high priest tonight, the only thing you have to do is touch him and he'll act the same way he did then. If you'll touch him with that kind of a touch. You believe then? Certainly he will. Now here's what did it. Now we have the spirit by measure. Christ had it without measure. We just like taking a spoonful of the water out of the ocean. He had the whole ocean. But the same chemicals that's in the the spoonful is in the whole ocean, but not as much of it. So that's the way a Christian is. We're nothing to compare with him, but we have a potion of his spirit in us. And then it acts like him. That's what makes us love people and try to help people and do good is because that spirit of Christ in us. Now, when God wanted to use his gift... He tucked Jesus out and he said, Son, on this order, Lazarus, your friend, is going to take sick and die. I'm going to raise him up through you. I want you to go away and stay away for four days. 
Jesus never said a thing about it when he come back and raised Lazarus. Didn't say one thing about getting weak, did he? And he raised the man from the dead that had been dead four days. Why? God was using his own gift. But a little woman with a blood issue touched him and he said, I got weak. What was it? It was a woman using God's gift. See, Jesus didn't have no vision of her when she touched him, but she knowed something happened. He knowed something happened. See, the woman was pulling the power of God through the Son of God. That's the reason he got weak on that little healing. But great miracles where the Father had showed him, he didn't get weak. Because God was using his gift. The woman was using his gift. That was the difference. Now, you have faith in God. Don't doubt nothing. But believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, each one of you. If you don't have a prayer card, you look this way and say, Lord, I can't get into the prayer line tonight. But if you just let me touch your garment. And let... If that's your voice speaking through that man up there, I know he don't know me. And if that be you, Lord, then let him turn around and tell me what my trouble is. And then see if he isn't the same high priest. Now, down along the line, we're not playing or preaching or talking about visions. Each one of you has to remember this. That the angel of the Lord, when meeting me at the beginning, it, the vision wasn't to heal people. He said, I was born to pray for sick people. If you can get them to believe you and be sincere when you pray, nothing will stand before the prayer. How many has read that, heard that? The commission is pray for the people. I never did like that old fast line. You just uh, lay your hands on them, just jump them through like that. I can't see that. That's not praying for the people. Pray for the people. Now, then if the anointing of the Holy Spirit is here, and then we pray and ask God, then lay hands on you and pray for you as you go by. Do you believe you'll get well? Are you all in the prayer line now? Are you believing it? Raise your hands if you're willing to accept it now. Just like little Ricky did. How could that little fellow know anything about vision? His father never even asked for a vision. He never asked a thing. I never told him nothing. I just went and laid hands on Ricky. That's right, isn't it, brother? That's right. And Ricky got well. Because Jesus Christ honored the Father's faith to stand in our prayer and heal his little boy and give him back to him alive. Thanks be to God for it. All right. Now, if you will... Get up there, Billy, and help the people up. Now, if they're too crippled to come up and they've got a prayer card, we'll put them down here so I can come to them. Now, I want everyone not to be in any hurry now. We're in the service of the Lord. Uh, it makes it so hard. Sometimes when I go pray for sick people in auditoriums and things, they, well, they just now call me into the platform to speak. And if I let out under 12 o'clock, they think they got cheated. But when I get here in California, I understand that you all go home at 8.30. So just bear a little while. Paul preached this same gospel all night long. And somebody fell out of an upper story window and killed himself. And Paul laid his body on him. He come back to life again. Many of us sit up and watch a late show. We go to dances and parties and stay all night. But if the preacher's over 20 minutes, I'll never go back again. See, that our heart ain't right with God. Our, heart, our soul's feeding on something else besides God. Now, here's the lady to begin with. Now, before I start the prayer line, let's just say this. Now, if you've got sin in your life, down along this prayer line, the reason I've always combed every person close because anyone knows that you can take a gift and get yourself in trouble with it. We're all aware of that. Moses done exactly what God told him not to do, but he did it anyhow. God told him, go down and speak to the rock, and he smote the rock. But he got in trouble with God. I never could believe it was the nature of the Holy Spirit. When them children teasing that young prophet, being bald-headed, Elijah, and saying, Oh, bald-head, oh, bald-head, why didn't you go up? And he turned around and cursed those little children in the name of the Lord. 
and two she bears kill 42 little innocent children. Is that right? That don't sound the nature of the Holy Spirit. But it was an angered prophet. You have to watch. Therefore, what if God let the devil put a sickness on you to bring you to discipline? And then some gift comes around, pour some oil on you and cast that thing away from you. Then he's in trouble with God. See? So remember, if you've got unconfessed sin in that line, step out. For it'll make you worse than you was when you come. See? Now, I'm putting it right back in your lap tonight. See? It's on you. If you come to the platform without that, because I'm not going to search for visions, I'm going to pray like you all wanted me to. Is that what the church wanted? To pray and lay hands on the sick? That's Then later on through the week, if you want to go back to the other type of line, all right. It's here all the time. On the street. How many of those that met people on the street out everywhere in public life and everything and seen visions take place? You heard me say those things. Raise your hands all around over the building now that know it. Sure. See? It's not only the church, it's home, on the street, everywhere. Go down the street and the Lord will say, don't go there, turn this other corner. A man with a blue suit on, stand there crying. Go to his house. His wife's near death. Go lay your hands on her. I'll tell the people in the car, a man with a blue suit on is going to be down here. His wife's laying in the bed. When you go in the house, there'll be a certain picture hanging there. It's perfect every time. See? It just happens anywhere. Now, so that you'll see that the Holy Spirit is here. This woman is a stranger to me. Is that right, lady? We do not know each other. But God does know us both. Now, I just want your attention for a moment. If the Holy Spirit will reveal to me what you're standing here for, do you believe it is God? You will. How many of the audience will believe it? And the rest of you, you won't even require uh, asking a vision. You just believe it anyhow. I just have faith. Now, the lady, I, she's, we were probably born years apart, miles apart, and I, I've never seen her before, and I guess this is our first time meeting, and that's just all there is. We're just standing here. But if the Lord Jesus would say to you something, I don't know what he would say, but something that you know that I know nothing about, something that you have done, or something that you're planning on doing, or some sickness, or some trouble that you have, if he would reveal that, you'd know it have to come through some power. Would you be like the modern church of Jesus' time, say it was Beelzebub, or would you be like the woman at the well, said, I perceive that thou art a prophet. We know when the Messiah cometh, he'll tell us these things. Would you believe it would be the Lord? Because it's his promise. The woman seems to be a Christian because her spirit feels welcome. If the audience can still hear my voice, between the woman and I comes the, the light. There's going to be a vision. The woman is pending an operation. That is true. You believe God can tell me what kind of an operation that would be? It's a gallstone operation. That is true. <laughs> That's right. And you're happy, it was happy about something when you walked up here. It was happy because you've been called in the prayer line tonight. That's right. For you prayed this afternoon for coming that this would be your night. You'd be called. Is that right? Now, you know I wasn't in the room with you. And let me tell you the reason this is the last night you can be here. You couldn't have come back. That's right. Would it embarrass you if I told the audience why? On account of bus fare. That's right. You won't have to come back. Jesus Christ makes you well. Now go home. And the Lord God grant to our sister this request. God bless you, sister. Do you believe the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Now just be reverent and we'll pray. I don't want to know your trouble. I just want you to come so I can pray for you. Dear Lord, heal our sister and make her well of whatever is wrong. In the presence of the Holy Ghost, I lay hands on her in the name of Jesus. Amen. I go rejoicing, thanking the Lord. My brother, do you believe the Lord will heal you? Isn't that wonderful? Not a thought of a vision at all. See, it's all passed away now. It's gone. Uh, how many knows I couldn't do that before? Raise your hands. You've been in my meetings. Certainly not. Not a sign of a vision. See? I pray that God heals this, my brother, as I lay hands on him, knowing that he's standing in the presence of God. Not his brother, but in the presence of God. I ask this healing in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, brother. Dear God, I lay hands upon my brother and pray that you'll heal his body and make him well. In the name of Jesus Christ.
Amen. God bless you. Now you go rejoicing. Everybody, when you leave here, if you're, if you're healed, act like you're healed. If you believe it, act like you are. Go and say, thank you, Lord. It's finished work. It's done. Well, you say that was just that one, that one person is all it was. That it isn't. All right. Here, is this a, is this a lady? All right, lady. You and I are strangers, are we? All right. You've seen me before, but I don't know. You have no idea who you are, what you are, what you're doing here. That's right. Is that right? You believe that Jesus Christ can tell me your trouble? The first thing I want to say that you have been healed before. That's right. You're a lady minister. And you're suffering now with uh, weakness, nervous, female trouble and complications. If that's right, raise your hand. As you were healed the last time, so are you healed now. Pass off the platform to be made well. In the name of the Lord Jesus, come, sister. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, I pray that you'll bless this dear soul and heal her. As I lay my unworthy hands upon her in the name of thy holy son, Jesus. Amen. Go believe me, just like the dad did for little Ricky, and will be made well. Do you believe? You believe me to be his servant? You believe that God could reveal to me your trouble? It's nervousness. You believe that he'll heal you? With all your heart? All right, sir. Then you can return back to Oregon, be well, to your home. That's right. Go on your road, rejoice. God bless you. Heavenly Father, I pray that you'll bless this dear woman and make her well. Through Jesus' name, amen. Dear God, I pray for this young woman that you'll heal her. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless our brother. And as I lay my hands on him, I ask for his healing. In the name of the Lord Jesus, amen. You believing out there? Everybody in favor with God now. Having favor, believing. Don't doubt, but believe with all your heart. And just keep your seats. Be reverent. How many out there now doesn't have any prayer card wants God to heal you? Raise your hand. That's it. Just keep praying. You believe, lady? Yes. You believe that God can tell me what your trouble is? Yes. If I would tell you your trouble, would it make you feel better? Just a little time with this woman so your, your people get satisfied that the Spirit of God is here doing these things. The woman's got trouble in her colon. That's right. You've had an operation, haven't you? If God would tell me who you was, would you believe me? All right, Miss Snyder, you go home and be well. In the name of the Lord Jesus, if you'll believe I have faith in God. Now, don't rally for that. See, just believe that God is here. Lord, I pray that you'll heal the woman and make her well. Through Jesus' name, grant it, Lord. Come, brother. Oh, Lord, I pray that you'll heal him and make him well. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. How do you do? I lay hands upon this, my sister, in the name of Jesus Christ for her healing. Amen. There's a glass of water, brother. Right behind you, a glass of water. That's all right, brother. Dear God, I pray for our brother that you'll give to him the desire of his heart, making him well in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you come, sister? Lord, I pray that you'll heal our sister and make her well in the name of Jesus Christ. Come right ahead, sister. Have faith now. Everybody be in prayer. Lord, I pray for our sister that you make her well in Jesus' name. Amen. Come now, boom. Lord, I pray that you'll heal our Amen. sister and make her well. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You believe that God will heal her? Lord, I lay hands upon her and ask for her healing. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless our brother. Make him well. In Jesus' name. You believe? See, you get it, friends. Now you see why my ministry, brother David. Amen. You get it? See, if you if these people would get it, they'd rejoice as much when the hands is laid on as they would with the vision. The vision has nothing to do with it. Them other people, watch. If I didn't think they was going to catch it, I, I would stop them. See, 
It's just hard, see, for you to change around. Well, if, I believe if I seen the Lord and I was sick and walked across the platform some, and I seen the presence of the Lord like that, somebody pray for me according to the Scriptures, I'd say, thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 It's finished. That'll be all. I go out of here rejoicing and happy as it could be. Oh, how glorious. Speak English? You believe me to be his servant? If God will reveal to me what your trouble is, you believe me to be his servant? That colored lady sitting right back there with high blood pressure looking at me. You believe, sister, that the Lord Jesus make you well? You, you, you don't have a prayer card, do you? Do you, you have a prayer card? No, you don't need it. Your faith made you well. <clears throat> See what it was? See, the lady, I seen another lady standing here, and this woman's perhaps Spanish. And there was a colored lady kept appearing here, larger, bigger, taller woman. And I kept seeing with that thing over her arm. And I looked around to see where it was. And I thought, where is it? And I seen that angel of light standing right over the woman. And I called it. That's why it was. What did she touch? What did she touch? I've never seen the woman in my life. She's sitting there without a prayer card to be called in the line. But she was praying. If that's right, lady, wave your hand. The woman is just healed. Wave your hand back there if that's right. Sitting there praying. That's right. See? You believe. Have faith. Here, that started a chain. Here's another colored woman sitting right out here in front of me at the end of the row. Right out here. It's praying also. Yes, ma'am. You believe that that stomach trouble's over? Heart trouble's over? You had heart trouble and stomach trouble. If that's right, wave your hand. You were praying also. You are healed. Do you have a prayer card? You don't have a prayer card. No, sir, you don't need one. Your faith makes you whole. Now, ask the lady. The lady that was just healed just now. You don't have a prayer card, do you, lady? You do not have a prayer card. No. You were just sitting there praying. Lord, let it be me. There you are. And there she's healed. What did she touch? The high priest. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. For people who will believe. Now, let's take this little lady here. Then let's let the rest of the people come right on by. Because you can feel the effect. It's getting too much now, you see. It just starts moving. The little lady sitting there looking at me with her hands on her face out there in front, suffering that bronchitis, if she'd believe. You, ha you have a prayer card, lady? You're not in the prayer line. Stand up if you're not in the prayer line. Stand up. You had bronchitis, didn't you? All right. Go home and believe now. Jesus Christ makes you well. That's right. Touch the hem of his garment. The woman never touched me. None of these people's touched me. What did they touch? They touched the high priest, Jesus Christ. And he's acting just like he did then. Just through channels of his church. His faith is coming into the people. They're looking this way. Then he speaks, use my voice. I couldn't tell you what I said to the people. I don't know. I have no way of knowing. Only through the tapes and things. But it's Jesus, the Son of God, proving that His coming is near. It's drawing near now. People must get right with God. Break down the walls of petition. Get right. Believe God. Our time's moving fast. Now, if the little lady here, this once here, been out, just made a show out of her standing here, and I was going to speak to her anyhow. If I'd ever said no more to you, you'd believe anyhow, wouldn't you? All right. But being at this other lady, which was a colored woman, Ethiopian, appeared before you, a Spanish woman, and her faith drew it that way, I'll speak to you just a moment, so it'll help the Spanish people. There's been the Anglo-Saxon, now that, now you're Spanish. That probably taken the whole church here tonight to believe. I don't know you. I've never seen you in my life. We're strangers. Is that right? If it is, raise your hand. Now, that's to you Spanish people. That's to you... Uh, 
the Ethiopian, and the others just to the Anglo-Saxon, this year, the white people. God is no respect of race or people. No, sir. We're all born of one blood. If we're white, black, yellow, brown, we could give each other a blood transfusion because we come from one blood. That's right. The countries we live in changing our colors had nothing to do with our blood and life and our Creator. But you might see that God doesn't respect people, uh, the nation and nationalities or colors. You're pending an operation. It's going to be more than an operation. You're with child. Now, the reason I said that because some might think it was a tumor. It isn't. But you also have to have another operation. That's for a rupture. That's right, isn't it? And you've got a baby to be born, and it's got to be a cesarean. Is that true? Raise your hand. Go. God's going to bless you, and it's going to be all right. God bless our sister. Do you believe with all your heart now? Now, just be in prayer while we pray for the rest of these people. Dear Father, I pray that you'll heal this woman and let her come back to this church rejoicing. In his name, amen. God, I pray for this woman and this little boy as I lay hands upon them and ask you to heal. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. God bless you, Lord. God, I pray for the little lady. That you'll heal her and take these spells from her and may she never have them again. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. God bless our brother and I pray that you'll heal him and make him well. In the name of Jesus Christ. That's the idea of the I pray for our brother and ask that you'll make him well, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Come, sir. I pray for thee, my beloved brother. Laying hands upon you, according to God's word, I ask in Jesus' name for your healing. Amen. I pray for thee, my brother, and laying hands upon you, by the anointing of the Holy Ghost that's the close now, I ask for your healing in Jesus' name. I lay my hands upon this, my brother, and I ask that in Jesus Christ's name that he'll be made well. Amen. I pray for thee, my sister. Now lay hands upon you and ask in Jesus' name that you will get well. Amen. I pray for thee, my beloved sister, and ask that in Jesus Christ's name that you will get well. Amen. I pray for thee, my sister, and I ask that in the name of Jesus Christ that you'll be made well. Amen. I pray for thee, my brother, and I ask that in the name of Jesus Christ that you shall be well. I pray for thee, my brother, and I ask that in the name of Jesus Christ that God will make you well. I pray for thee, my brother, and I ask that in the name of Jesus Christ that you'll be made well. I pray for thee, my sister. I ask Jesus to make you well. Amen. I pray for you, my sister, and I ask that in Jesus Christ's name that he'll make you well. I pray for thee, my sister, and I ask that in Jesus Christ's name that you'll be made well. Amen. I pray for thee, my sister, and ask that in Jesus Christ's name that you'll be made well. I pray for thee, my sister, and I ask that in the name of Jesus Christ that you shall be well. I believe that. I pray for thee, my sister, and I ask that through Jesus Christ's name, the Son of God, that you'll be well. Are you believing? Yes. By the authority of God's Bible, the witness of the Holy Spirit, which is now present in the church of the living God, who is praying now with me for these sick people, as the church of the living God, we challenge the evil spirits of unbelief to leave every person that they may be made well. This woman may be healed now. Through Jesus' name, amen. I pray for thee, sister. And I ask that in the name of the Lord Jesus, you be made well. I pray for thee, sister. And I pray that in Jesus Christ's name, you shall be made well. God bless you, sister. I pray that God Almighty, through Jesus Christ, his son, will make you well. Amen. I pray for thee, my sister, and ask that in the name of Jesus Christ, you shall be made well. 
I pray for thee, my sister, and ask that in the name of Jesus Christ that she'll be made well. As I might stop and say to Ricky's father out there, there was no more prayer harder than that. Is that right, brother? Just a little prayer. It's because that the father was believing the way God had worked it out that I was supposed to be the one that prayed for Ricky. See, that's the way that you should believe it tonight. You come here not to be seen. You're dying, some of you. You must believe that God is going to do it. It's God that does it. Sister, I pray for thee. In the name of Jesus Christ, may you be made well. I pray for thee, my sister, as I lay my hands upon you and ask in Jesus' name for your healing. And for thee, my brother, I pray that Jesus Christ will make you well. And for thee, my sister, I pray that Jesus Christ will make you well. Amen. Now, in the presence of God, in the face of this company, this host of people, and for all who has not been prayed for, and maybe you cannot come back, you're here, you're bound of sickness, I pray that the God of heaven will make you well. If you'll just believe all that you have seen and believe to be the gentleman laying here on a stretcher.